Welcome to Strawberry Creek Shrimp Farm. My name is Eddie Cochran and today we're going to go through some of the basics of raising freshwater prawn. Uh, we're here in Chatham, Virginia. We run one of the largest nurseries in the state of Virginia. And we're going to go through today in this video, we're going to talk about water quality and water issues. So I guess what we'll do first is throw the net here and get up a couple shrimp to show you what we're talking about and what we raise here. You're on. Can you see? Okay, so here's a couple we threw the net. We have a couple Get closer, of small babe. prawn that we've netted. They're about a month and a half into their growth, a month or so. We're a little behind schedule this year. But you can hopefully see them there. Alright, so raising prawn. We're going to start talking about some of the water issues and how to test. I get a lot of my farmers uh, when they first get started don't know. So first thing we're going to talk about is dissolved oxygen. And here we have what is called a dissolved oxygen meter. Now these are made by YSI. You can see the digital readout here. And it's got a little probe, we drop that in, and it'll tell us what our oxygen level's running. Of course, on a sunny day like today, our oxygen is over 100%. When it gets cloudy days or during the nighttime, the pond quits putting off oxygen from the sun, so these numbers will gradually start going down, which is why we run our paddle wheel aerator at night to make sure we keep our dissolved oxygen levels up. That's important whether raising prawn, catfish, any kind of fish, is to make sure we have good oxygen content in the pond. Now our next most important feature is pH. And you'll find a lot of different ways in which to test your pH. We'll start out with probably one of the most familiar ways is a little test kit you test your aquariums with you get at the pet store. Now the problem you have with these systems is they stop at 8.6. So your pond if you have 9 or 10 pH you're never going to know it because it always stops. I have farmers call me and say, hey, my pH is always 8.5. Well, of course it is because that's as high as the meter will read. So these in general are not very good for raising fish or prawn. Your next common method, and I like to use these for a quick check of your pond. Still, the pH doesn't go high enough. It only goes to 8.5. But these kits you can pick up, they're little strips, and you just dip them in the water and it'll give you a reading. These are good for checking your alkalinity and your water hardness, and we'll talk about those later that it's important to keep your water hardness up. That helps the prawn redevelop their shells when they molt. Your next best kit, if you don't have a meter here, is made by hot. You can see it's got a color wheel. You take and add so many drops to your water and then you spin your wheel until you hit the right color. Now these will go up to 10. You can buy them, you know, of course if it gets up over 10 you're not going to know it either. The preferred method I like to use is a Hanna pH pen. One, because I'm colorblind and I can't see colors. The colors are so close. But this gives you a nice digital readout. You basically just hold it in the water and wait until you see and it'll it'll tell you what the pH is. We checked this one just before we got started and the water was 8.8 .8, 
which is good for the middle of the day like this. Your pH you want to keep in this 7 to 9 range is plenty good for raising prawn. So these are important to have and make your life a whole lot easier, especially when you have a lot of ponds. We have farms that have up to 8 acres of water, so when you have to check numerous ponds, this is a handy little device. So anyway, that's the way we check our pH in the pond. Now, should your pH get high and you start having pH problems, what we'll do is add cracked corn or some kind of organic matter to the pond. And this will help bring the pH down slowly. Of course, when we first start, we like to lime the ponds really good before we fill them. So it'll help throughout the summer keep your pH, you know, from bouncing too high one way or the other. It'll always fluctuate, but the better your water hardness, the less fluctuation you'll have in your pH. So anyway, that's what we do with the water quality. Now as far as feeding, we feed them a 32% sinking catfish food that's available from southern states and that's what we feed them once or twice a day uh, depending on the farm and how much time you got I'll usually feed oh once a day myself but you want to make sure you cover the pond totally with the feed so we'll walk around and spread the feed to make sure that is evenly distributed. The prawn are very territorial and you want them to stay where they have food so they don't go eat their brother who's next door who might be molting at the time. So anyway, this is our first little segment on pond quality and water quality and hope you'll stay with us and we'll document throughout the grow season that we have left here and uh, We'll go through uh, and watch them grow, and then we'll uh, show you how we go about harvesting them. So that's it for today. Hope you'll come back and visit us often. Our website is strawberrycreekshrimpfarm.com. We're available on the web, uh, and you can find a lot of information about raising freshwater prawn, catfish, rainbow trout. Uh, we'll have information on everything for you. So thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.